do really is is tweet with the hashtag that was a great talk Freeman thanks very much hugely inspirational I'm gonna make a note to tweet that um, it's it's really uh, a, a pleasure to be here and I'm gonna bombard you now with a whole bunch of images and videos that tries to explain what my company which is a group of friends called Marshmallow Laser Feast do. And assure me, we're still working it out. It's a long and zigzagging path that we've taken. And um, yeah, hopefully you will see a common thread. But it's you, your generation, that will really take what we've just started to do and an attempt. And I hope to, I look forward to seeing what, what you do with this mixed reality in this digital world. So, what do we do? We work on the intersection of art and science and technology. Um, we use loads of tech and try and make interesting experiences for people. Immersive 360 experiences that essentially I've kind of zoomed out and, and, and uh, looked at the work I've done and gone, oh, actually, yeah, it's, it's always 360. And, and, and that's the idea. We, I love making stuff for people to enjoy and, and uh, I'm working with big teams. And uh, some of the teams, well, all the time, we're working with real experts. And so there's that whole teamwork buzz that, that, that we get from the work. And I studied film and television and started working at, um, in TV for a long time. And I've realized that I trained to make stuff for a rectangular screen. But actually, in my whole profession, I've pulled stuff out of the rectangular screen and into the into the physical space. And we've done loads of stuff, uh, loads of projection mapping, we've toured, we, we've got drones and, uh, and all kinds of things. And I think what we do really reflects our interest in the amazing stuff that everyone can do and, and collaboration. And we, we find new emerging technology and grab it, kind of look at it, and try and tear it apart and um, try and do different things with it. So this is an example of one of the first things that we did. Um, it was a long time ago, we dressed up in morph suits and we made a projection mapped room. And what we did was we used computer game tech, uh, a program called Unity that anyone can download now for free. And we made interactive projections and so we wallpapered all of the, the walls and, and, and uh, the sofa there and used old school kind of film techniques as well with like fishing rods and, and explosives and stuff like that to mix reality. And we still are trying to do that today and you can see us kind of jumping around and there's cardboard boxes and, and things like that. Um, but behind the scenes, there was loads of like wizards that we were pulling in, LED wizards, uh, 3D animators, musicians, uh, like dancers and, and, and choreographers, and people just with ideas as well. And we get them all together and, and we try and do fun stuff. And in a second you'll see that in fact this whole room just disappears, it's a blank room with us in, in, in morph suits, just, um, just playing around. But along the way, it's like, oh, geez, you know, we can use all this technology for other things, for bands, you know, performances, stuff like that. And boom, there you go. So it's, it's super lo-fi, but it inspired a lot. And I'll skip past this, because this just shows you how, how we actually did it. Loads of this can be seen on our Vimeo page. And we've done other stuff like light painting. We get we try stuff out, we discover something, and we just don't stick to it. We try and do something new the next time. And so in this case, um, we don't projection map, but we, we do long exposure photography. And so each frame that you see, once this robot, um, the, the robot arm uh, is moving a, a, a projection screen, a plasma screen, each frame is a long exposure photograph. And you can see, again, we're playing with 360 space. It's this idea of painting with light in, in a 3D environment. It's really good fun. And again, painting with light, we built a drone show. We, we, we built these, uh, we used a motion capture rig 
Uh, on the end of that stick is a reflective ping pong ball. It is infrared reflective, and above you can see uh, IR cameras, infrared cameras, that are looking out for it. It's like the exact same um, ping pong ball suits, you know, that King Kong and Gollum and, and people like that wear. You can use the same system to fly drones. And so we built drones that stopped light uh, leaking out of the top. And what that meant was we could do something um, uh, exciting in the, in the 360 environment. We can um, uh, create a performance. And in this case, you can see the drones flying around, and they're reflecting the beams of the moving lights below it. And there's LEDs and things like that. And we made music to go with it. Um, you can't really hear it, but, um, but um, yeah, th th there we go. And so we created a score for music at the same time as creating flight paths, a kind of choreography for drones. And this relates to VR as well. And you might think, how on earth does this relate to VR? Well, we can film these things, but also we're thinking about things in terms of 360. Like this moment when the beams of light went onto the audience, there was a real connection with the stage. And so we're trying to break down the barriers of this rectangular screen that you see in films and bring it into the environment. And uh, it, was, it was exhausting, actually, working on this kind of project, but good fun. Um, we made a laser forest after that, we, um, which is a giant musical instrument that you can run around, whack the, the trees, and, and they make, make a sound. Um, and um, Actually, it's, it, it was gigantic as well. There was hundreds of lasers. Sculptures we've made. Uh, we've made laser chandeliers. Uh, loads of stuff that, um, that we think make interesting experiences. And always we think about it in terms of 360. You can see these are robot, robot kneecaps, actually, that we used uh, to control the la laser diodes. We can plug all of this stuff together so it can be musical, it can, be, uh, it can involve video and projection mapping performance. And we've done fancy stuff with large, you know, outdoor with, with all these wonderful light sculptures. Again, learning from one project and applying it to the next. And we, this is a giant husky dog we did for Miley Cyrus that came from behind a, a screen and it was inflatable. It was 60 foot tall. And so Miley Cyrus could dance around and we projection mapped onto it. You'll see in a minute that it really is huge. And we use all the clever tracking techniques that we use for the drones for this, because we know where stuff is in space. Um, again, more lighting stuff, but I'll get onto the VR. This is called laser fingers. Uh, we track people's fingers and turn it into laser beams, um, which is just really good fun. Uh, we plan to take this high up into a mountain and paint over the horizon, because lasers go for miles, which is good fun. Uh, this is laser face, where this lady puts a giant marshmallow in your face, and we track it. They're delicious marshmallows that we designed. They were supersized, so they take at least one minute to chew. And that means when you're chewing away, you can see your face converted to laser beams and music. And there's a little button, and you can do all these different settings. Again, thinking about 3D space and, um, and experiences for people. Um, we've done stuff with dancers, and so what we can do with projections is project uh, we can interpret movement. You can see there's a stick man moving, and that's live data. So you're moving around like this, and you've got that skeletal data. You know where the hat is, uh, the head is, you know where the wrists are, and you can draw points. And it doesn't have to just be a direct skeleton. It can be this interpretive thing that we project onto a gauze. And so we're bringing all of this stuff that traditionally is on screens into the real world and mixing it with people. And this is great because you can make stuff like interact. This is an interactive um, wall that where if nobody's on stage, nothing happens at all. But if there is somebody on stage, you can waft, send a whole bunch of um, particles around. It, it, there's LEDs there. So again, we're plugging stuff in uh, and designing it always with 360 in mind and, um, and filling space. The 360, look, we gave people torches so they would fill the space with light. And if we hadn't have done the laser forest before this, 
um, we wouldn't have learned how much impact uh, and what a wonderful atmosphere we can create when we fill a, an environment with light. Then comes LiDAR, and this is what I'm demoing here. Um, LiDAR is a technique that, uh, there's another uh, speaker, ScanLab, who are the masters of it. Um, a, a scanning environment, so it's not photographing, you're, you're, you're creating a point cloud, and you can bring it into VR. I haven't got much time, but I'll, I'll, I'll whiz through a few more examples. This is, again, projection mapping. And the important thing I need to make is that it doesn't necessarily have to be for, um, uh, for virtual reality. You can think about these things. It's not theatre, it's not performance, but, it, but it, there's, a, there's a world for this kind of design where you, you're bringing technology together. And uh, so we'll get on to virtual reality very quickly. And you can make, using technology, you can make all these wonderful 3D scans and, and you can now bring objects from the real world into the virtual and take them back so you can walk, walk around them in VR like our friend Angie is doing right now or you can 3D print them and bring them back into the physical world and mix them up again and so I'm encouraging all of you to do this and we, we, we can do it with film, this is a 360 camera for VR and, um, and robotics and my advice to everybody is this. Despite the bombardment of stuff that I've just presented, don't be scared of technology. Totally embrace it and ask loads of questions and ask for help and find experts. And they will, uh, and, and they will take you into all kinds of exciting areas. This is Bolivia, where we went recently. And this is the Amazon, where there's a 360 uh, film that, that we made. So it's very varied, the stuff that we've done. Sometimes cartoony, like this, bum, 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 bum. This is virtual reality. And sometimes, like the final piece here, is um, in a forest where we present the eyes of the animal, which is the installation that I'm showing today. And in the eyes of the animal goes through four very different creatures. And, and what we did was we took a virtual reality experience, put it all into this headset that hung from a tree, and then hikers would come along to the Lake District and discover these headsets, put them on, and see a very interesting um, virtual world come to life. And you'll see my friend's dad at the end of this little bit. Here's just a few examples of the virtual world. And in a minute, he will pop out. But So this is in the eyes of a midge that can see CO2. There's, there's also a frog. This is a dragonfly. And come on, video. Do, 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 do. Frog. Frogs are, are very attuned to see movement especially lateral movement. It's interesting being a virtual reality headset with this. So I know I'm running out of time now, so... Come on, Barney's dad. Where are you? <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and that's my partner in crime, Barney Steele. So thank you very much for listening. I hope it made some sense. If there are any questions, please fire away. And uh, thanks a lot. It's such a good event. So. Um. Wow, isn't that amazing? And you actually have that one here? Yes, yes. Um, there, there are a few. Has anybody in this room tried it? Oh, there are a few. Yeah, there are, there are, there are a handful. Um, yeah, but do feel free. It's, it's quite long. It's nine minutes long, so not everybody can try it. They'll have to chase me after. So how much further do you think mixed reality can go? Just 
it can go so much further. So much further because we've only just begun the virtual reality phase. And so things like Google Cardboard, the Oculus Rift, and various other things like PlayStations, Morpheus, and so on, are introducing virtual reality. But around the corner is augmented reality that allows, you to, uh, allows wearables uh, to mix what we're seeing now with, with uh, projected virtual images. And that's when it gets super exciting because it's moving along at the same pace as all this advanced tracking is moving. So eventually we won't have to wear the ping pong ball suits to track uh, humans. Um, the computers are, are getting so advanced they can identify patterns. So they can recognize where people's eyes are, hands are, without the need for ping pong markers. And that's where it gets really cool. Soon you won't even have to leave the sofa. <laughs> no. Unless you're making a, a video in the forest, obviously. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much to Robin from the amazingly named Marshmallow Laserfeed. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.